Carnival was first introduced to Sham Ananism, a pagan festival in ancient Egypt during the Pharaonic era. It is an Egyptian national festival marking the beginning of spring. It was celebrated during the Ptolemaic times, the Roman times, medieval times, and up to the present day. After the Christianization of Egypt, the festival became associated with other Christian spring festivals. So did Sham Ennisim influence today's carnivals? Hey guys, before we start, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Filling the parks of Cairo to celebrate spring. After a year of political turmoil, Egyptians have been taking some time out to enjoy the Sham Enesim national holiday. It's traditional to have a picnic with family and friends. The holiday is marked by people of all religions. The ancient Greeks adopted the holiday several years later after Alexander the Great had conquered Egypt. The Romans adopted the Greek holiday and gave it the name Bacchanal after the deity Bacchus, celebrating it with copious amount of wine, dancing, music, and other extravagant behavior. Throughout the Middle Ages, Europe celebrated the Feast of Fools. A fictitious bishop was chosen during this time. Also, people would roam the streets and sang lewd songs, recited nonsensical speeches, and dressed in animal masks and women's attire. Although the Feast of Fools was banned in the 16th century, the tradition of satire and ridicule remained strong in many contemporary carnivals. Many years later, the ancient holiday took on a Christian meaning and became known as Carnival, vow which means farewell, and carne which means meat in Latin. People who were getting ready to give up things for Lent in the 18th century Italy enjoyed dressing up, disguising themselves, and having fun. A popular fancy dress theme was based on Commedia dell'arte with characters such as Pierrot and Harlequin. In 1492, Christopher Columbus set sail in pursuit of India, but instead landed in Trinidad. He referred to the Caribbean islands as the West Indies. From that point forward, the Caribbean and Latin America saw a steady influx of Europeans and enslaved Africans that brought Carnival along. In the Caribbean or the New World, Carnival continued to evolve. From Christmas through Ash Wednesday, the plantation owners held lavish fancy balls and parades in the streets to celebrate. They dressed up in fancy clothes and wigs and danced late into the night. The mosque or masquerade traditions of the celebration started in the late 18th century, where French plantation owners organized the masquerades and balls before enduring the fasting of Lent. The enslaved Africans, who could not take part in the carnival, formed their own parallel celebrations around the burning and harvesting of sugarcane called cambalé, which included mass impersonations, African drumming, and chanting were a key part of the carnival. There were characters like Moko Jumbies or stilt walkers, and Jab Molassi Devils, and stick fighting was played. Cambule, which is a precursor to Trinidad and Tobago Carnival, has played an important role in the development of the music of Trinidad and Tobago. Calypso music was developed in Trinidad in the 17th century from the West African Kaizo and Cambule music brought by enslaved Africans imported to that Caribbean island to work on sugar plantations. These enslaved Africans were stripped of all connections to their homeland and family and were not allowed to talk to each other. They used Calypso to mock the slave masters and to communicate with each other. Today, the annual Trinidad and Tobago Carnival is the biggest carnival in the Caribbean and takes place on the Monday and Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. Also, there are many competitions and parties in the run-up, as well as kitty carnivals on Saturday and Jove on Sunday. The arrival of more than 400 happy Jamaicans. They've come to seek work in Britain and are ready and willing to do any kind of job that will help the motherland along the road to prosperity. They're all full of hope for the future, so let's make them very welcome as they begin their new life over here. By 1948, the ship Empire Windbrush brought Caribbean immigrants to England to fill labor market gaps. As an offshoot and a continuation of the Trinidad Carnival, Notting Hill Carnival was born and celebrated in the streets of London in 1966 to honor Caribbean culture and identity. Although it has been estranged from its religious roots like many other carnivals, most carnivals now in the UK are secular celebrations that occur in the summer. In the return of Rio's carnival, it was canceled last year, it was postponed this year for two months. That's because back in February, there was a surge in the Omicron variant. So the mayor decided to hold it in April for the very first time. Now he considers that it's the biggest cultural export of Brazil. Not only that, but it's also 
fundamental to Rio's economy. In 2020, it generated 800 million euros and it also employs thousands of people all year round. So as well as the joy, the elation here, there's also a huge sense of relief that Carnival is back. The Rio de Janeiro Carnival is the largest carnival in the world. It is an annual Brazilian festival held the Friday afternoon before Ash Wednesday at noon, which marks the beginning of Lent, the 40-day period before Easter. During Lent, Roman Catholics and some other Christians traditionally abstain from the consumption of meat and poultry, hence the term carnival. Rhythms, contributions, and costumes vary from one region of Brazil to another. For example, in the southeastern cities of Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, and Victoria, huge organized parades are led by samba schools. Those official parades are meant to be watched by the public, while minor parades allowing public participation can be found in other cities, like Belo Horizonte, also in the southeast region. Brazilian carnivals, in essence, is a combination of European indigenous and African culture influences such as Yoruba. Each group has played an important role in the development of the structure and aesthetics of the Brazilian carnival of today. For instance, the samba dances and the main rhythms used in carnival celebrations were developed by Afro-Brazilians and make use of European instruments like the cavaconjo and the pandeiro to create melodies and arrangements. Also, some of the costumes in Brazilian carnivals borrow costumes from the clothing of the natives, like the use of feathers and the tendencies to use lighter pieces of clothing. The main parades are held in the Samba Drome in Rio. Mardi Gras is a tradition that dates back thousands of years to pagan celebrations of spring and fertility. It is traditionally celebrated on Fat Tuesday, the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, and the start of Lent. In many areas, however, Mardi Gras has evolved into a week-long festival. Mardi is the French word for Tuesday, and Gras means fat. In France, the day before Ash Wednesday came to be known as Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday. Traditionally, in the days leading up to Lent, partiers would binge on all rich fatty foods, meat, eggs, milk, lard, and cheese that remained in their homes in anticipation of several weeks of eating only fish and different types of fasting. The first American Mardi Gras took place on March 3, 1699 when French explorers pierre Le Mouillon de Berville and Sierra de Benville landed near present-day New Orleans, Louisiana. They held a small celebration and dubbed their landing spot Pointe du Mardi Gras. In the decades that followed, New Orleans and other French settlements began making a holiday with street parties, mass balls, and lavish dinners. When Mardi Gras in 1827, a group of students donned colorful costumes and danced through the streets of New Orleans, emulating the festivities they observed while visiting Paris. Ten years later, the first recorded New Orleans Mardi Gras parade took place, a tradition that continues to this day. In 1857, a secret society of New Orleans businessmen called the Mystic Crew of Comus organized a torch-lit Mardi Gras procession with marching bands and rolling floats, setting the tone for future public celebrations in the city. Since then, crews have remained a fixture of carnival scene throughout Louisiana. Other lasting customs include throwing beads and other trinkets, wearing masks, decorating floats, and eating king cake. Hey guys, we come to the end of this video. Did you know that the current day carnival has such a long history? Please let me know in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until then, we'll see you next time.